Cassidy Me and Loretta like living there Well, it's been years since the kids have grown A life of their own Left us alone John and Linda live in Omaha And Joe is somewhere on the road We lost Davy in the Korean War And I still don't know what for Don't matter anymore You know that old trees just grow stronger And old rivers grow wilder every day Old people just grow lonesome Waiting for someone to say Hello in that talk much more She sits and stares through the back door screen And all the news just repeats itself Like some forgotten dream That we both seen Someday I'll go and call up Rudy We work together at the factory But what could I say If they ask what's new Nothing what's with you Nothing much to do You know that old trees just grow stronger And old rivers grow wilder Just grow lonesome Waiting for someone to say Hello in there Spot some hollow ancient eyes well, Please don't just pass them by and stare As if you didn't care Say hello in there Oh, I don't know what to say. I think it's... I, I... I think that's going to be a classic, just in hearing it. You have everything in it, don't you? The complete uh, shutting out of old people and the feelings they undoubtedly have that you are able to evoke and experience. Quite remarkable. I believe I hate to sing that song for old people. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did the, one of the first uh, concerts I ever did was a thing for uh, uh, some old people over at the YWCA on Dearborn. And uh, I, had, I wasn't writing too much then. This was long time ago. I just did it to help out my brother once, and uh, uh, it was, it was kind of strange, because they really enjoyed it. They enjoyed every song, you know. Um, they enjoyed the whole show, and, they, and we did 
one kind of every kind of music you could think of. You, know? you see, how'd they feel about this song? Oh, I didn't have this one written. At oh, that you time. didn't have this. No, this one. was oh. like uh, five or six years yeah, ago. I well, I think I don't know how very old people feel, but I think that somehow they would find that song theirs. I mean, the, the idea is that it's to be recognized. You're saying hello in there, you know, mm-hmm. and it's that non-recognition. It's that being thrown away like a used orange rind, as Willie Loman said in, in um, Death of a Salesman. And, or as the old grandmother battled in, you know, Edward Albee's American Dream, the play? Right. Right. Remember that? She refused to be taken away, but they took it right. away in that cart and she fought it all away, you know. I watched that I think... three times when they had that on, huh? recently they had it on television yeah? last year or so. I... Well, no, it's a, it's a powerful song, oh boy. Everything, and they'll talk about also lost manhood, meeting his friend in the factory, what's new, and the same old news, too. You saw the picture, it's almost, you've written, a, it's almost a powerful short story there that you have. I kind of wanted to pick names that, uh, uh, I didn't want to pick uh, strange names, I just wanted to pick names that, yeah. that if you're born that long ago, that yeah. you might be named, yeah. you know, because names usually get popular for Fashions a while and, and names change, and I, yeah. But I didn't want to make the names too strange or anything. No, you got Fred and you got uh, daughter Loretta. Linda and son-in-law. Rudy's a dog, lives across the Rudy. street. Rudy, Rudy, yeah, right. <laughs> I say they always call him in around 5 o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> and I was writing that, and I heard him calling for Rudy, and I figured, well, that's My guess is, good is John Prine, who's, uh, as you can probably guess by now, one of the most imaginative and moving of American songwriters and singers today. And the... Um, you say you had a melody all set for it. You had a love song all set for it. I mean, you had the melody set. Yeah, but then... I didn't have any words. I was going to, yeah. I planned, uh, yeah. I figured that tune was, was pretty enough for a love song. Mm-hmm. And I sat down to write one and uh, instead I wrote about yeah. old people. Because there's one that perhaps some, what, what else did the people like when you sang for them? Because there's so many of your songs that at least ten, <laughs> we'll only hear a bit of those. I want to save Sam Stone for a moment. This is a short one I yeah. wrote when I was uh, 14. Um... I call it the frying pan. And, uh, I like Roger Miller a whole lot then. Mm-hmm. He was writing all these songs. I come home from work this evening. There was a note in the frying pan. I said, fix your own supper, babe. I run off with the fuller brush man. And I miss the way she used to yell at me, the way she used to cuss and moan. And if I ever go out and get married again, I'll never leave my wife at home. Well, I sat down at the table, screamed in a heart and cried. And I commenced to carry it on till I almost lost my mind. Cause I miss the way she used to yell at me, the way she used to cuss and moan. And if I ever go out and get married again, I'll never leave my wife at home. If I ever see another salesman come and knocking at the door, I'm gonna pick up a rock and hit him on the head and knock him down on the floor. Cause I miss the way she used to yell at me, the way she used to cuss and moan. And if I ever go out and get married again, I'll never leave my wife at home. <laughs> you were 14 when you wrote that. Yeah. So it's the Roger Miller influence, but also it was also things you observed and saw, you know, the breaking up of uh, homes too, running away, and I, I suppose you may have seen that too as a kid. Did you? Is, is, here again, the combination of influences on you, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I don't know where that one came uh, from. It just... <laughs> yeah. it sometimes, sometimes I just write a little bit faster than I think I have to sit back and... See what I wrote. <laughs> you're 14. Yeah. When, when did you start? Uh, and when I when I just first, my brother taught me a couple of chords on the guitar, mm-hmm. and I started writing right away. I wrote a song one night, and uh, took me my first song took me about three hours. <laughs> and I went downstairs and I told my mother that I wrote a song, and so she sat down to listen to it, and I got about halfway through it, and I was picking it. And she started singing, uh, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? <laughs> and I got so embarrassed that, that I, don't know, I don't even know a word to that song today. I just threw the lyrics away, and I didn't write anything for a little while after that. You know, I didn't know. I thought I had my own tune and everything else. It was oh, tune. it was Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Yeah, oh, your right. mother, did it's your family just, sing a lot? Well, my mother, yeah. my, my, uh, her father, uh, who lived down in Paradise, he used to play guitar a lot. Merle Travis is from uh, 
Muhlenberg County, and so is uh, Ike Everly, mm-hmm. the Everly Brothers' father. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, a whole lot of people used to pick down around there. So you really come Close from record. that. You come from that uh, very rich region, then. Mm. But you see, yeah. do you mind? Do you mind just for the moment? I happen to love "Will the Circle Be Unbroken." Just the melody. Of I that. don't even know. You but, no, just uh, the phrase, because that's what your song was. Is that what your song was? That that then, melody. I, the one I you wrote when you were a little kid. I don't even know if I can remember. Can't remember that's the right. tune now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's the one that you. Mixed up with something but your else. mother picked you up on that though. Immediately as you were singing. Yeah, well, she just yeah. kind of unconsciously. Yeah. I started picking it, and she started humming and, and singing the words to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to talking to John Prine, and you'll soon be uh, hearing his songs on Atlantic, and uh, undoubtedly John will be known throughout the country too, as rightfully he should be, as one of the most imaginative of America's songwriters today and singers and it's uh, we take a slight pause for a moment and we return with John and of course Sam Stone among other songs and how he came to write these songs too in a moment after we hear from our friend across the glass in the control room we return to singer songwriter John Prine and so John as we pick up the conversation it's quite a distance from Paradise Kentucky distance in time Yet not too many years ago, was it, to Chicago, where you've been living for some time now? How many years since you left Paradise? Oh, I didn't, um, I, I was born up here. You were born? I mean, in yeah, my family comes from, uh, from Paradise, and we just used to oh, go, back go back and down there during yeah. the summer and everything. We'd go back down there. Does your family, on that subject, your family still think, even though you were born here, hmm. do your family, being Kentuckians, still think oh, of that as home? Oh, Kentuckian, right. Oh, that's, that's home. home. Right. Yeah, that's always yeah, the that's case. First thing my father used to tell everybody. Yeah. The last of a dying breed. Yeah. <laughs> Kentuckian, pure Kentuckian. It's funny, you know, Appalachian people, uh, mountain people, and uh, black people from the Deep South invariably speak of home as where they came from, not where they are at this mm-hmm. moment in Chicago. So, so we come to uh, the great society. Blues. Conflict, we, veterans eh? Blues. Veterans Blues, or Sam Stone. And perhaps the singer this, perhaps we'll talk about it after you... Uh, do it. All what right. you want to talk about it before? That's uh, all right. I'll share. sing it. <laughs> Sam Stone came home to his wife and family after serving in the conflict overseas. And the time that he served had shattered all his nerves and left a little shrapnel in his knee. But the morphine eased the pain and the grass grew around his brain and gave him all the confidence he lacked. With a purple heart and a monkey on his back, There's a hole in daddy's arm where all the money goes. Jesus Christ died for nothing, I suppose. Little pitchers have big ears, don't stop to count the years. Sweet songs never last too long on broken radios. Stone's welcome home didn't last too long. He went to work when he'd spent his last dime. And Sammy took to stealing when he got that empty feeling for a hundred dollar habit without overtime. And the gold rolled through his veins. Like a thousand railroad trains And eased his mind in the hours that he chose While the kids ran around wearing other people's clothes There's a hole in daddy's arm Where all the money goes And Jesus Christ died for nothing, I suppose Little pitchers have big ears Don't stop to count the years 
sweet songs that never last too long on broken radios. Mm -hmm. Sam Stone was alone when he popped his last balloon, climbing walls while sitting in a chair. Well, he played his last request while the room smelled just like death, with an overdose hovering in the air. But life had lost its fun. There was nothing to be done But trade his house that he bought on the G.I. Bill For a flag draped casket on a local hero's hill There's a hole in daddy's arm Where all the money goes Jesus Christ died for nothing, I suppose Little pitchers have big ears Don't stop to count the years Sweet songs never last too long On broken radios mm -hmm. Well, that, that song really says it all. You wrote that song how long ago now? Uh, I believe three years ago. Three years ago. And it's since then information has come to our country and to people mm, about, yeah, about the, two weeks ago <laughs> about the heroin the addicts in vietnam and that's that, that's it too isn't it the songwriter a certain kind of writer of songs and a certain kind of poet is also able to judge and prophesy too you can tell the feelings you heard is that it well you? more or less uh, uh i didn't sit down to write a song about uh, uh about a veteran on uh, heroin it was just the two uh the two things, uh, like, well, heroin uh, usually doesn't end any place, and uh, and it was kind of uh, there's kind of a just a, a futile feeling, you know, when you're in a service. Um, I wasn't in Vietnam. I was. Uh, they sent me to Germany for two years, and uh, but the, throughout the whole army, even when you're in. Over in Germany, it was just, uh, uh, you didn't feel like you were doing too much there, like you had no business. And uh, it was that plus the image of somebody on heroin, and that's the only reason I combined the two, more more than trying to write a song about a, a veteran on heroin yeah. in it. And uh, it was kind of strange that, that it ended up, now there's a... Uh, a lot of them on heroin. Yeah. It's funny how it worked out. Yeah, you, you had the image, the idea in mind, the symbol in mind, right. and the reality came into being. Right. Irony. Oh, so this, it's funny. And listen, as, as I listen to Sam Stone and then to old people, there's as a connecting thread here in which both are counting for nothing in a way, whether it's the young soldier was the old couple. Mm -hmm. And in your songs, you are, by implication, of course, throughout without any soapbox saying it, you know, look at me, each one. doesn't have to be. This song, what's that use of lines? The use of little pictures of big ears. You're using old homilies, too. It often become very ironic. I was surprised how many people hadn't never heard that before. Yeah. Some people say, oh, what is that? What oh, is that? And I just yeah. thought everybody yeah. used that. Uh -huh. and, uh, um, and sweet old songs don't sound the same on broken radios. Yeah, sweet like songs never last too long on broken radios. I love that line, there's a hole in daddy's arm where the money goes. I was, I was uh, kind of thinking about, uh, I had those two lines, that's what started the whole song off with. I had that, that sweet song, never last too long on broken radios, and there's a hole in daddy's arm where all the money goes. And I was kind of thinking of, uh, in a way, uh, like some uh, political cartoon, like the humor they use in political cartoons. Um... Uh, and I had, I had just kind of a picture of a, of a, of a fellow, uh, uh, shooting money into his arm, you know, with like a rainbow of money just falling down into his arm, and that's where that's where I got that line. Yeah, so that's how that's how it works then. So the, there are a couple of images you have, and out of it, your own observation, experience, mm -hmm. hearing is. If the is image is strong enough, then it, it uh, the rest of the song mm -hmm. develop out of it. It yeah. seems. Uh, 
seems if the first couple ideas of the song. Mm. Like, then I don't have as hard a time. Like, that was one yeah. of the easiest songs I ever wrote. Really? Because after yeah. I had that, those two lines, I, the rest of the song just poured out of it. Is that, a, is that, that's how it works sometimes, just flows. Usually, sometimes sometimes yeah. more difficult. Yeah. If, uh, if the idea is kind of <coughs> sketchy in the first place in the song, it takes me a lot longer because uh, every line after that is mm. a little sketchy. Mm. And I don't want to get too far away from the yeah. original uh, thought. Mm. You have the monkey, the, mon the monkey on the back too. I think that's Nelson Algren that I remember first heart, used yeah. that purple heart in the in, um, man with the golden arm. Right. Well, go ahead, John. So it's the city. It's the city plus the uh, plus the, the mountain country. The city plus the country both have had their impact on you and observation. So go ahead, because the songs I know just. So how many songs have you written, by the way? Oh, Do you about, kept track? Oh, somewhere between 25 and 30. Right. Kind of, yes. yeah. I use most all of them. Yeah. I run into a lot of people, they say, you know, they've written 500 songs or something, but uh, you never hear more than, <coughs> than about uh, 40 of them at mm. the most, you know, usually. <coughs> Just point out that Chris Christopherson, while visiting Chicago and playing at the Quiet Night, heard John Bryan, and as you probably could guess, flipped and urged he come to the bitter end in New York where Christopherson was playing and uh, during a couple of... Stevie Goodman uh, and they, helped out. Uh, he was playing with Chris And at the Steve time. Goodman, too. And uh, he brought Chris over to see me over at the Earl. I kept telling him to come over. And he got him over there the last night he was in town. At the Earl of Old Town. Mm -hmm. And he did, and that was it. And, of course, what happened in New York, the various uh, guys, critics, others, came to hear John. So you'll be soon hearing and buying, I trust, his recordings on Atlantic. He's going to Muscle Shoals. It's interesting, going to Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Yeah, I hope so. Mm. It's uh, it's kind of a toss-up between there and New York, and I hope we end up down in mm. Muscle Shoals. This is interesting development, isn't it? In Muscle Shoals, Alabama, where the dam is, as you pointed, halfway There's between Memphis. There's a TVA dam down there. TVA yeah. dam. That's, they've got one in Paradise. That was yeah. before they stripped mine. They had to... Um, they built a TVA dam mm -hmm. a long time ago, and I ran across a... Uh, I was looking through my grandmother's trunk once. This was in, we were running through this about five or six years after she'd passed away. And, uh, and I ran across a postcard between her and her cousin that it was talking about, uh, this was back in the late 30s or so, it was talking about how they were going to ruin the whole building this TV mm. dam, you know. <laughs> and it was really, it was really strange the way mm. it uh, just was so up to date yeah. with the strip mining yeah. and everything, too. The TV, of course, had a wholly different purpose in mind. <laughs> right, Providing yeah. power for the but humans. But a lot of people didn't want, yeah. well, a lot of people that lived right, right around there yeah. didn't want yeah. Yeah. at the time. Strip mining, of course, mm. a wholly different purpose. Well, it, yeah, it was, uh, a lot of jobs mm. came out of there for a lot mm. of people down mm. there. Back to the songs. You go ahead, you name your, name your poison. Well, this is a song about a, uh, when I was in the army, these um, I was down in Louisiana most of the time, and uh, just about every army camp in the states has a small town uh, right near it where all the soldiers go, and usually the whole thing's made up of you know saloons and maybe five or six saloons and a beauty parlor, and that's about it usually. And uh, the people in these towns always kind of seem to seemed just a little bit different. It seemed like they had to put up with a different, uh, like almost like a tourist town, uh, except off season or something, because uh, the soldiers would come to town, but they never, none of them ever wanted to really be there. So they really didn't, uh, uh, they just really raised hell, you know, all the time. And uh, I got thinking about the people who were living in these towns. So I wrote this as a, it's a love story. And uh, I usually say it's about, it's about a couple lovers that never met is what it is. It's about two people I picked, and uh, they don't meet in the song at all. And it's uh, partially about uh, uh, masturbation, too. Because I thought both these people were uh, uh, alone. I mean, uh, uh, mentally, too, they, they spend a lot of time just with themselves. <laughs> Small town, bright lights, Saturday night, pinballs and pool halls flashing their lights, making change behind a counter in a penny arcade, set the fat girl daughter of Virginia and Ray. Lydia, Lydia hid her thoughts like a cat. Behind her small eyes, 
sunk deep in her fat. She read a romance magazine up in her room. It felt just like Sunday on a Saturday afternoon. But dreaming just comes natural, like the first breath from a baby, like sunshine feeding daisies, like the love hidden deep in your heart. Bunk beds, shaved heads, Saturday night. A warehouse of strangers with 60 watt lights. Staring through the ceiling, just wanting to be. Lay one of too many, a young PFC. Donald. There were spaces between Donald and whatever he said. Strangers had forced him to live in his head. He envisioned the details of romantic scenes after midnight in the stillness of the barracks, the train. But dreaming just comes natural, like the first breath from a baby, like sunshine feeding daisies, like the love hidden deep in your heart. Hot love, cold love, no love at all. A portrait of guilt is hung on a wall. Nothing is wrong, nothing is right. Donald and Lydia made love that night. Love. They made love in the mountains. They made love in the streams. They made love in the valleys. They made love in their dreams. But when they was finished, there was nothing to say, 'cause mostly they made love from ten miles away. But dreaming just comes natural, like the first breath from a baby. Like sunshine feeding daisies, like the love hidden deep in your heart. Oh boy, Julian, uh, uh, John, more and more, it appears that your songs are so powerful that they really are dramas too. The dramas. This could easily be just as I look at it. This powerful, aching sort of short story of these two people. Of loneliness, of course, you know, of that, of that unfulfilled of dreaming and of fantasy. Lydia, Donald, and love. I tried to uh, a couple times. I used to like to write, and uh, I could never write anything longer than a short story. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't. I had. Uh, I want to get to everything right away. Yeah. And uh, well, you do. That's the point. Yeah. So short, then. So it's also a, a poem. Well, I suppose poetry and short stories get to things <laughs> immediately too, and also the. The you said it was just the, yeah the army town the town near a barracks, and the feeling you get you also capture here middle America small town America and yet also people in the big cities too as long as everything Lydia and Donald also could are here too you know yeah, yeah. right but you capture in that one place uh. so the song comes to you then almost uh, any source. For you, the the, the the basis of of a song, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm getting to where now I like to. Uh, I almost like to pick a uh, uh, some sort of theme and uh, and work around it. You know, get some kind of foundation and and work around it. Now, just to just more or less to challenge, see what I can do with with it. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Blow up your TV, throw away your paper, if possible, please. <laughs> <laughs> to sign there. Yeah. That's one. Um, uh, I had, uh, I had to these two lines. I had. Uh, she was a level-headed dancer on the road to alcohol, 
and I was just a soldier on my way to Montreal. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to uh, mix. I was still wanted to mix like uh, politics and romance, you know, mm -hmm. up together, you know, see what come out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess it's kind of like the American dream it's in a way what came out of yeah, it. Yeah, a soldier on the way to Montreal tells us quite a, quite a I bit. Call it, <laughs> I call it a Spanish pipe dream. Uh -huh. <laughs> She was a level-headed dancer on the road to alcohol And I was just a soldier on the way to Montreal Well, she pressed her chest against me about the time the jukebox broke Yeah, she gave me a peck on the back of the neck And these are the words she spoke Blow up your TV, throw away your paper, go to the country Build you a home, plant a little garden, eat a lot of peaches, try and find Jesus on your own. Well, I sat there at the table and I acted real naive, for I knew that topless lady had something up her sleeve. Well, she danced around the bar room and she did the hoochie coo. Yeah, she sang her song all night long, telling me what to do. Blow up your TV, throw away your paper, go to the country, build you a home, plant a little garden, eat a lot of peaches, try and find Jesus. On your own Well I was young and hungry And about to leave that place When just as I was leaving Well she looked me in the face I said you must know the answer She said no but I'll give it a try And to this very day we've been living our way And here is the reason why We blew up our TV <laughs> Threw away our paper, went to the country, built us a home, had a lot of children, fed them on peaches, they all found Jesus on their own. Oh, that's beauty. It's a it's a <laughs> isn't that a bad recipe at all? <laughs> that song was a whole lot of fun to write. Yeah. Now that now that these are songs where you get great kick writing too. The humorous songs, mm -hmm. the 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 light at the same time making that point too. That's great. How's that line go again? That uh, she was a dancing girl uh, on the road to she alcohol. She was a level-headed dancer on the road to alcohol. And I was a soldier. And I was just a soldier so on the way, way to Montreal. Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> I you figure think if I can't get a song out of that, <laughs> I couldn't write anymore. <laughs> that's a beauty, though. And found Jesus on their own, too. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, too. Yeah. Well, you know, there's so much to John Prine that all we do is just uh, hear a bit of him during an hour. And um, we look forward, of course, to the album. And uh, no doubt there'll be several albums. And uh, we're just... Uh, meeting today, at least I am, at least for the first full hour I heard before. Uh, very, I think someone who's quite a uh, powerful and important songwriter in America today. And John, what's a good way, aside from wishing you good luck down to Muscle Shoals and Atlantic and the songs you will sing and we hear you sing, what's a good, what's a song with so many of us to say goodbye with for the moment? Oh, boy. There's so many. <laughs> it need not be a farewell song, just yeah. a song, you know. <laughs> you have Quiet Man, Far Me, and An Eagle Smile. Oh, I got one. Umbrella. Called the Flashback Blues. Flashback Blues. Mm -hmm. And so, as John Brown sings, uh, John Brown, I like that too. It's not bad. <laughs> well, I might change. <clears throat> hey, John Brown, <laughs> he's a powerful man too. John <laughs> Prime sings that. I thank you very much indeed. Best of luck. Thank you. Well, window shopping through the past. I ran across a looking glass Reflecting moments Remaining in a burned out light Tragic magic Prayers of passion Stay the same through changing fashion They freeze my mind Like water on a winter's night Spend most of my youth Out whole boat cruising And all I got for proof 
is rocks in my pockets and dirt in my shoes. So goodbye, non-believers. Don't you know that I hate to leave here so long, babe? I got the flashback blues. Show the laughs Recorded in between the bad times Happy sailors dancing on a sinking ship Cloudy skies and dead fruit flies Waving goodbye with tears in my eyes Well sure I made it but you know it was a hell of a trip Spend most of my youth Out home, boat, cruising And all I got for proof There's rocks in my pockets and dirt in my shoes So ten times what it grieves you That's how much more I hate to leave you now So long, babe, I got the flashback blue This is our program for this morning and tomorrow's guest after this message. Tomorrow my guest is Judy Collins. Some of her songs are the songs that she sings so beautifully. Until then, take it easy, but take it.